Hello, today we're going to talk about breakfast. Have you ever wondered how to make cheesy hash browns without any cheese? Or scrambled tofu look just like scrambled eggs? Well, stay tuned and we'll share with you just how to do that today. Hello, we're the Benton sisters. My name is Trishana, and these are my sisters, Audrey and Emberly. Did you know that cooking is a science and its worth is more valuable than any other science? Nutrition is number one of the eight organic laws for optimum physical health. Audrey and Emberly, what are the next seven? Um, exercise, fresh air, water, sunlight, temperance, and rest. And number eight is trusting divine power. Nutrition brings into focus the close relationship which exists between food and health of body and mind. Disease brought on by nutritional deficiency have become the main cause of death in the past few centuries. With the advance of refined, devitalized foods, degenerative diseases have become the main cause, a leading cause of death. But we want to change this about by eating foods that are protective to our health. What are some of the protective foods? Fruits. Nuts, grains, and vegetables. And legumes. These foods prepared in simple a manner as possible are the most nourishing and healthful. They impart strength and power of endurance and vigor of intellect that you can't get from any other diet. How encouraging it is to know that these degenerative diseases need not destroy us when our immune system is improved and built up by eating the natural foods. And today, we're going to share with you how you can make your old favorites without those heart attack ingredients. Amberly, what is the first recipe that we're going to demonstrate today? Okay, first we're going to show you how to make cheesy hash browns. And we want to make the cheese for this. And Audrey, would you write off, read off the ingredients for us? All right, let's see here. Let's start with one and a half cups of raw cashews, four teaspoons of salt or to taste, four tablespoons of sesame seeds, two two ounce jars of pimentos for color, two teaspoons of onion powder, two teaspoons of garlic powder, half a cup of lemon juice, two cups of water, one third cup of food yeast flakes, one third cup of red and green bell peppers chopped, one medium onion minced, a fourth a cup of fresh parsley, two, 12 medium russet potatoes. Mmm, that sounds good. Okay, let's go ahead and make the cheese for this. Oh, we're going to add our cashews to the blender. And these cashews have been washed. And we also want to add our other seasonings. That's sesame seeds and food yeast and our salt. And how much onion garlic powder do we need? It was a teaspoon okay. of each. I'm going to put in about a teaspoon in here. Okay. And then of onion powder also. Now the reason why you like to use uh, nutritional yeast is because it gives it that more cheesy flavor. Is that correct, Kimberly? Oh, it gives it a wonderful cheesy flavor. And what about the sesame seeds? What are the reasons oh, for using that? Oh, it helps doing that too. It also mm -hmm. enhances that cheesy flavor. Yeah, it's really... Well, that's good. Okay, we'll add some water. Would you like to put some water? We just need two cups here. Okay. Okay, one. And two. Okay, and we want to blend this. Now you want to blend this for about a minute. And let's add our coloring right now. Okay, you can also add a fresh bell pepper to this instead of your pimentos. And that really makes it taste really good. It has this really fresh bell pepper flavor. It's delicious. Okay, mm -hmm. let's blend it.
looks good. Now, for you at home, you'd probably want to blend this a little bit more. Let's see how it looks. And we check with a spoon or a spatula to see if it's grainy or not. It looks pretty good. How did we do? Did we get everything in there? Check. Um, I think we didn't get lemon juice. Oh dear. Let's better. We better add the lemon juice. Okay. Okay. How much was it? Half cup. Yes. Okay. There you go. That. Okay. And let's add the onion. We like just to add the onion and then just whiz it a little bit until it's minced. Okay. That's one more time. Okay, that's probably good. Now let's send the potatoes through our, the food processor. This is so nice, it makes it go nice and fast. And you want to use a blade, like the cheese blade size. And we'll just put that there, put the lid on. And these potatoes for this recipe, you don't have to peel them, so that's wonderful. Makes it go fast. Okay. And so fast and easy. Just send them through. Wasn't that fast and easy? Okay, we're just going to add it to the bowl here, and then I'm going to pour the cheese over the top and stir it up. I have something to share about regular cheese, and this quote that I found from, taken from the Wellness Encyclopedia from Food and Nutrition at the University of California at Berkeley. It says it takes eight pounds of milk to make one pound of most types of cheese. That's highly concentrated, isn't it? With, with the result that just one ounce, an average slice of cheese, contains as much fat and most of it is saturated as a cup of whole milk. In fact, most cheeses derive 60 to 90 percent of their calories from fat. Therefore, vegetarians who replace meat with cheese are doing themselves no favor. Substitute cheddar cheese for trimmed, broiled sirloin steak and ounce for ounce you end up with almost twice as many calories, six times the saturated fat as well as far more cholesterol and far more sodium. And so, it's nice to know that you have a cheese substitute that's just as good and it'll even melt on your pizza without having all that high cholesterol, that saturated fat, and sodium. And this is really good. How is it coming along, Audrey? Mm, it smells delicious. Oh man, it's making me hungry. <laughs> okay, you might want to lightly spray your pan so it won't stick. And then just put this in there. Well, Can I help you a little bit here? Yeah, that might be easier. Okay. And then what happens? Do we bake it in the oven? I think so. Let's see, you bake it in the oven for 350 for about okay. half an hour. Oops. Mmm, that's really good. What else can you do with it, Emberly? Um, you can also stick it into, like, we like to use individual um, pie pans, like 8 inch, mm -hmm. and then you have your own individual serving. Oh, that's and neat. And just place it on the... Your plate. Okay, so we're going to go bake that now? Yes, and I'll put this in the oven and you tell us what's next. Okay, we're having um, enchilada scrambler. And let's see, the first thing on um, our list is one cup of cashews, raw of course, um, three and a half tablespoons of McKay's chicken seasoning, one teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of lemon juice, three cups of water, two tubs of frozen tofu, thawed and drained, one tablespoon of food yeast flakes, one teaspoon of parsley flakes, two tablespoons of wonder flour, half a cup of red or green, red and green bell peppers, diced. All right, you ready? Okay, um, let's add our cashews again to the blender. There we 
go. And these have been washed. And we also want to add our water. And we'll just add a little bit at first, just enough to blend. And we're going to add warm water this time so that way this can um, cook up for you nice and fast. And then let's go ahead and add our seasonings to this. And then we'll blend it. And this is our wonder flour. This flour is so wonderful. <laughs> you just, if you want to thicken up something really fast, you know how when you st um, um, throw in cornstarch, how it gets all lumpy and, and all that? This, is, all you have to do is just, just sprinkle it in and stir it up, and it doesn't get lumpy, and it's really nice. Okay, we'll add our McKay's chicken seasoning. And this is dairy-free, right? Yes. Right. Okay. And then we'll add our onion and garlic powder. I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit in. That looks good. Okay, let's go ahead and blend it. And you want to blend this for about a minute. Okay. Just put it in here. Turn your skillet on. Let's add the rest of our water first. Oh, we need. It. Oh, that's right. We didn't put the rest of our water in here, did we? I thought it was kind that's of. That's one thing you don't want to forget. One time, a lady called us at a cooking school, and she was trying out some of the recipes. And she said, "I decided to go home and make the scrambled tofu to see how it turned out." She says, "But one thing, it turned out really, really gummy, like glue." And she goes, what happened? What did I do wrong? Well, we went through the list with her and, and tried to figure out what would happen. And what we found out, she forgot to add the one cup of water. And you can see that's an easy mistake to do. So when you try this recipe, make sure you add all the water. And the reason why we do it in two parts, the second half later, is because we want the smallest amount of water with the cashews first so it can cream and get really smooth before we add the rest of the water. And so we'll have the rest of the water here and whiz it up real quick. OK, just a second. All right. Okay, in the skillet we have tofu that's been frozen. And we like it frozen. It tastes really good. Um, when you freeze it, it makes it nice and chewy. And we're just going to crumb it here before we add our gravy over the top. So what happens, Emberly, if you don't freeze the tofu? Well, freeze, um, it just will not have that nice chewy like egg texture. So freezing it makes the texture change from mm -hmm. soft to more chewy. Yeah. And when you drain out the water, that way you're able to absorb more flavoring mm -hmm. from whatever sauce you pour over it. Well, that's good. What else can you do with the enchilada besides making a, a scrambler? Well, um, with a scrambler with, besides making an enchilada out of it? Well, you can make, um, you know, have you heard of those sandwich makers? When you just put two pieces of bread, you know, and put the scrambled tofu in the center and put in the sandwich maker. Mm, and those are so good. Oh, so those good. are good. Okay. <laughs> Looks good. Okay, now we're going to pour the sauce over it. And while this is thickening up, we're going to show you how to make the waffle. And this is the crispy legume waffles. Have you ever heard of legumes in your waffles? It sounds kind of silly, doesn't it? Sure does. But actually, having beans in your waffles make it more uh, nourishing and lasts with you more endurance throughout the day. And so this is a good way to get some beans in. What bean are we using today in our waffles? We're using soak garbanzos right here. And we need a blender. OK. What all do you put in your waffles? All right, let's read them off for you right now. OK, three cups of water, one and two-thirds cup of old-fashioned oats, one cup of legumes, soybeans, garbanzos, or pinto beans, um, fourth of a cup of cashews, fourth of a cup of dates, half a teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. Now, is there some special trick in doing the beans? You want to soak them in water overnight, right? Right. You don't want to use can. I've used can before, and it does not work very well. What happens? 
it gets really, I don't know, it just doesn't, it's gummy, gummy, yeah, and it just goes all over your whole counter and does not stay in the waffle iron and it oh, overflows out of your right. waffle iron, makes a little big mess. Uh -huh. Okay, so we don't want to use canned garbanzos or any beans. We right. want to soak them overnight and use the soaked kind. Yes. Okay, do you need warm water for this? Warm water, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, and our cashews. And the cash is just to replace oil instead of using oil in it, right? Mm -hmm. And also give it a texture instead of having dairy added. That's right. And dates is in place of our sugar, a natural sweetener, and a little vanilla for flavoring and, and salt. Oops. Okay. That sounds good. And all you do is blend it. And can you taste the beans? You can taste the beans. I can't believe it. it's really good. All right. Now, if this is too thick somehow, just add a little more water. If it's too runny, add more oats. It's real easy. So, okay. Now we'll put it, um, spray our waffle iron. Okay. And just pour it in. And it cooks for 15 minutes. No, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. okay. How about, do we, are we ready to go back to um, the tofu scrambler? Yeah, how is that doing? It looks really good over here. Okay, Audrey, why don't you share with us the next ingredients we need for the enchiladas. All right, three cups of spaghetti, spaghetti sauce, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, a half a tablespoon of paprika, a fourth or a half of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, two teaspoons of molasses, and flour tortillas. And we prefer whole wheat. Sounds okay. good. I need our pan out here. Okay, show us how to do it, Emberly. Okay, we'll just put the tofu scrambler in our tortilla. Oh, it looks so good. And just put it the amount you like. Depends upon the size of your tortilla you have. Let's put a little bit more. Okay. And we'll roll it up. We'll place it over here. And we like to put the seam side up on top, up first. <laughs> How come you do that? Oh, it looks delicious. You can tell what's in the, on the, in the sides. It would be perfect time to have one of those little cute garnishing toothpicks poked right through it so it stays together, yeah, huh? When you pour the, um, the sauce over the top, it holds it in place. Oh, okay. So it looks really nice. And these are really big tortillas we have here. This will be delicious. Is there any other things you could put in your scrambled tofu, like maybe some Oh, you can add onions. mushrooms to it if you like. You can add, yeah, onions is wonderful, chives, um, bell peppers. Or you can add, like, add different vegetables, any of your favorite kinds of vegetables or mm -hmm. broccoli or something. Let's just do one more. Have you ever made, um, like, maybe egg salad oh, out of this yes. recipe? Um, not this recipe. We have one in, in the cookbook, and it's really good. It's egg salad sandwich. Oh, okay, are we demonstrating that sauce. one time? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Let's put our sauce over the top. Okay, you tell me how much to do here. Okay, let's go ahead and go down the center. Maybe you want to make it a little bit wider. Oh, that looks good. Oh, make so them starving. Mm -hmm. and and just dump it all on? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. If you want to go ahead and rewarm it in the oven or top it with some non-dairy cheese out of the cookbook, it's really good. And we'll just put some parsley on for garnish. And we're done. Let's check and see how the waffle's doing. Ooh, looks Ooh like doesn't it's that done. look good? Let's put mm -hmm. it on this plate. And we'll spread the butter on it. Okay, I'm going to put this in the oven. Okay. All oh, this butter is so delicious. 
And we're going to be sharing this with you also. And it's nice and firm, and it sets up just lovely, just like regular butter. Oh, Audrey, what do you have here? That, is that the cheesy hash browns? Here they are, just out of the oven. Oh, that turned mm, out good. It smells so good. You can even uh, put bell pepper on them with a little parsley. That makes it look really pretty, huh? Okay, should we make the butter now? Yes. And for this, we're going to have our cousin Beth come in and show us how it's done. Come on in, Beth. Do you like cooking in the kitchen? Yes. And do you help your mom very often? Yeah. Have you made the butter before? Yeah. All right, and you're going to show us how to make it today, huh? Okay. Beth, can you read us off the ingredients? Yeah. One cup cornmeal mush, one fourth cup water, one half cup cashews, three fourths teaspoon salt or butter salt, three fourths coconut milk, one teaspoon butter flavoring. Mmm, sounds really good. Okay, we already have the cornmeal mush cooking on the stove, right, Emberly? Yes, are you ready for it? I think so. Okay. okay let's go let ahead and let add it. Beth put it in. Yeah, Beth, you want to put it in? Show us how it's done, Beth. Yeah, go ahead. It's pretty hot, so don't let you burn yourself. Okay. And to make this cornmeal mush, we have in there, it's one cup of water and a fourth of a cup of corn, corn flour, right? Right. Emily, what happens if you don't have the right kind of cornmeal? Okay, the like kind we like to get is Elber's cornmeal. And um, which we found out is when we first started, we would mill our own popcorn. And then we started using store-bought you know, cornmeal, the flour. And we found out that there's two different kinds. And we didn't know that before. And one will thicken up nicely, and the other one won't. And so the one we found out that which will thicken up nicely is Albers cornmeal. And so you want the cornmeal that will thicken up, and you want it to be yellow because you want to have a nice yellow color. And um, so you just thicken it up until it's nice and thick, and then um, you just add it to your blender. Okay, and we'll, we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, Beth, go ahead. And put in the cashews. We like to wash our cashews again in the coconut milk. The coconut milk helps to make the cashews so they don't, you can't taste them, and the cornmeal kind of Makes it all a nice buttery flavor. And then the salt. And then a fourth of a cup of water, right? And here's get some water right here. And put that in there. Okay, and we'll blend it. Now you want to blend this for about a minute till it's satiny smooth. Okay, just turn it on. I think it's done. I can't believe it's not butter. Is that your favorite butter container? Yeah. You like to stick it in there? Mm-hmm. All right. Do oh, and that's the name of it. I can't believe it's not butter. This is from our right. cookbook, and we entitled it Love Your Heart Butter. And Beth is showing us how she likes to put her the butter after she's made it in her favorite butter container, and you stick it on the table for meal time and no one knows, huh? Okay, let's go ahead and make the food topping for to go on top of our waffle. Okay, thank you, Beth. You did a wonderful job. All right. Oh, that looks so good. If a child can do it, anybody could. <laughs> thank you. All right, you can go take that and put that on the refrigerator. Thank you. All righty. Now, fruit topping. The ingredients are, we're going to share with you. Okay, let's read them One off here. One can of apple juice concentrate and three tablespoons of cornstarch and four cups of fruit. You can, you, you can use fresh or frozen. Now we're going to add our concentrate to the blender along with our cornstarch and we're going to whiz it real quick. And then we'll thick it, thicken it up on the stove. 
Fruit is a perfect source for energy. What is the typical thing people put on their waffles? It's usually butter and maple syrup. But what happens is that maple syrup gives you that high energy level and then it leaves you with a low afterwards. And fruit is an easy way to get that same energy source. It gives you endurance and energy, but it doesn't leave you with that low feeling afterwards. And so we're going to show you how to make a wonderful fruit topping without any sugar added to it. Okay, we'll rinse it real quick here. Okay. So is this the glaze you would make to go over your fruit? Right. You can also add a fruit to go with, if you're using peaches, you can use peach concentrate. Or if you're using raspberries, you can use raspberry concentrate. Or <clears throat> for blueberries, we like to do half and half. We like to do grape and also um, apple. Apple's wonderful because apple can go with any kind of fruit. Mmm, the glaze is getting thick. It's done now. Audrey, go check the um, scramblers and see if they're done. Okay, we'll pour it over our fruit. Stir it up. And this is, you can pour this glaze over fresh fruit so you can have live uh, fruit for breakfast. And you can use this for anything. It works really well. Just put this on your waffles. And only we need now is whipping cream, don't we? Yeah. And we have a delicious whipping cream recipe from our cookbook. This is non-dairy. Can you believe that whipper cream is so white and fluffy? We'll just put some oh, on top yum. of the fruit. And I think we've learned a good deal today. Breakfast can be fun and exciting, and you can have it natural with all the fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables all here completely for you. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. So it's good to know that when you eat the food that God has provided for you, you're putting yourself in His care. I want to close with our food for thought for today. It says, the soul that responds to the grace of God shall be like a well-watered garden. His health shall spring forth speedily. His light shall rise in obscurity. And the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon him. Thanks for joining us today. And the next time we're together, we're going to talk about exercise. Doesn't this food look good? Mm. I think I'm ready for breakfast. What about you? Yum. <laughs>